It is the road to the White House. I am Melani Kai, and joining me for the very first time is someone who is trying to make history. Amongst other things, she's a spiritual guru, she's a best-selling author, and for the second time, a candidate to try to become our president of the United States of America. Marianne Williamson, thank you so much for joining us. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, let's start this conversation with going back to Texas, little Marianne. Was she running around parts of Houston, Texas, saying, I want to be president, I want to be president, and signing up for student council and, and all of that? Or did the hour of reckoning for you come sometime later? Well, I certainly wasn't running around saying I want to be president. But when I was 11 years old, uh, John F. Kennedy was shot and killed. So I was old enough to have a sense, certainly, of the trauma of the moment. And then when I was, what, 15 or 16, Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy were killed. Then when I went to college, there was huge um, protest against the Vietnam War and a realization of the U.S. war machine and what it was doing around the world. So it wasn't so much about what I was thinking about my life but rather the country and the world I was living in. So I can see now that certainly the experiences of my younger years, plus the fact that my parents were very uh, progressive politically. Uh, my parents even took us to Vietnam in uh, 1965 to quote unquote, show us what war was. So I can look back now and realize that I was informed quite a bit by my younger years and that I, I, I can see the trajectory that led me to where I am. So you're running for president as a Democrat. Currently, it's president, current president Joe Biden, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The Republican side is loaded with names such as Donald Trump, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and more will be added to that. What is different about you and your platform than all of the other presidential candidates? I think that the United States may, needs to make an economic U-turn. I think that the last 50 years of what's often called trickle-down economics has devastated the fabric of our nation. It has led to a massive $50 trillion transfer of wealth into the hands of one, really 1% 1 of our people, really shifting us from a government of the people, by the people, and for the people to a government of the corporations, by the corporations, for the corporations. We've moved for all practical purposes from a vital functioning democracy to a functioning oligarchy. Now, I'm not whitewashing or romanticizing American politics or American capitalism before this period, but I can tell you from having lived in it, there was at least a consensus we were supposed to try to be good. It wasn't like anybody can look back and say, oh, we were always fair, we, were, we weren't racist, we weren't anti-Semitic, we weren't, none of that. But there was a sense in the air we were supposed to try. Whereas now, the idea that short-term profits and profit maximization for short-term, for huge corporate entities has, has become the governing principle of our society. And it's almost not to be questioned. It has infused itself into the way our government operates and our society operates. And it leaves at least 80% of people in this country in a state of some level of chronic economic anxiety. A recent uh, poll at CNBC uh, report said that 70% of Americans uh, live with financial stress. Now, the things which would uh, reform that and change that and repair that are policies that are considered mainstream moderate positions in every other advanced democracy. Universal health care, free college tuition, paid family leave, uh, free child care, uh, guaranteed sick pay, guaranteed livable wage, and even guaranteed housing. So I think the American people have been played, and tweaking things a little bit here and there is not going to fix it. We need a fundamental economic reform in order to address the deeper causes of so much uh, human despair that is that is no longer the exception, but rather the rule in America. It's become a, a feature and not a bug of the American experience that too many people's lives are falling apart. It's Marianne Williamson. She is a candidate for 
president of the United States of America, and she's chatting with Melani Kai. So we see you on national TV all over the place. We, uh, Those of you who are following you, uh, we know what your platform is. Let's veer away for a little bit, just a second for this question. And I want to know, what is something about you that, not non-political, that may surprise myself and our listeners and viewers? You know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm pretty open about my life, really. Uh, maybe that I'm as, I don't know, like I just became a grandmother the other day. Oh, that congratulations. Yeah, but I'm more sensitive and kind of traditionally romantic type stuff than apparently some people might seem to think about things like babies and yeah, I mean, I'm maybe that would be something in general. I think for people who read my books, I'm, I'm, I'm not a mystery. You know, I, I'm pretty much, I'm certainly not who they quote unquote say I am, but I am who I say I am in terms of putting it out there, what my life has been and what my life is like. Mary, my first time with you, I thought we were going to have a viral TikTok moment because I know you start, you join TikTok, but uh, yes, it could be, but okay, I thought you were going to tell us some secret, like you sleep under the bed or you have a chamber, a hyperbaric chamber or something, but no. no. no there was, <laughs> like, you know, when I was young, I was very much a child of my generation and I certainly went through all the wildness of that time. And I've been open about that, but I'm older now and I'm sort of like have moved through those things and probably my life would appear somewhat boring to a lot. <laughs> but it wasn't always that way. Marianne Williamson, you, we talk, We a lot of people know you as a spiritual guru, a leader, uh, before you got on the scene and first put your name in the hat the first time to be president. Does spirituality every single day factor into your life? And how do, how do you run the country, if it does, how do you run the country with spirituality being a part of who you are and being the president of the free world? Spirituality is simply the path of the heart. And grounding myself in that is core to my life every single day. To me, what has gone wrong in this country is the public policy is no longer, not that it was ever completely, but at our best, our public policy has been aligned with the deepest humanitarian values. Uh, public policy should be aligned not with slavery, but with abolition. Public policy should not be aligned with the institutional suppression of women, but with women's suffrage. Public policy should not be aligned with the overreach of capital in a gilded age. It should be aligned with support for labor. Public policy should not be aligned with segregation. Public policy should be aligned with the civil rights movement. And we're living at one of those times where public policy is too often aligned with anything but humanitarian principles. I'll give you an example. Um, last year, there was a, a child tax credit that cut child poverty in half. Well, first of all, I have to say, if you can cut it in half, you could eradicate it. And we have the highest child poverty rate and the highest poverty rate period of any advanced democracy other than our own. Now, when that policy, when that child tax credit expired six months later, they did not permanent, permanentize it. When I am president, child poverty will not be something down at the bottom of the priority list. It will be at the top of the priority list. To me, how do you put spirituality into running the country? You realize that spirituality is the path of the heart. You know, even Adam Smith, he was the primary architect of capitalism, free market capitalism. Even he said, it cannot exist outside an ethical context. American capitalism today has so swerved from any kind of ethical context. It's more about exploitation of people, workers, community and environment and animals, and even now children, than it is about the safety, health and well-being of the American people. This has got to stop. That is so now infused into the way our government operates that our even our Congress is like a system of legalized bribery where these huge corporate entities, because of their undue influence of money, is able to drive public policy in the direction of their profit-making goals than in the direction of the safety and the health of 
and the, of the people on the planet. This has got to stop. And I'm running for president because when I'm president, it will be challenged in a fundamental way, uh, more so than it has been since probably and uh, Franklin Roosevelt. All across America, we turn on the news. The news is a buffet of violence and whether it's gun violence or it doesn't matter what they're blaming it on, <laughs> mental illness, it's a buffet of violence. Would America be a safer place if Marianne Williamson were president? I believe that it absolutely would, and I'll tell you why. And it wouldn't be immediately, by the way. The kind of fundamental reforms that I'm talking about, we need to remember, the president does not have a magic wand, and the president should not have a magic wand, but you would definitely feel, were I president, you would feel we have begun the season of repair. And I will tell you this, when it comes to violence, we must get rid of it in our hearts in order to get rid of it in our streets. A lot of people say, is it the guns or is it culture? And it is both. I am definitely for a ban on assault weapons and all of the common sense gun laws that we can possibly pass. Everything for having to do with high capacity magazines to bump stocks to uh, federal red flag laws, all of those things, uh, including assault weapons, all of that, I am for all of that. And we do everything possible within the purview of the executive branch. But I also think Americans have to look in the mirror. Everything from our food policies, to our environmental policies, to our justice policies, to our economic policies are violent. We have to recognize this. We will not become a, uh, a safe society. We will not get rid of violence until we choose to become nonviolent. We have to ask ourselves, we have to take a deep look. I'll tell you something. One of my first acts as president will say, I wanna see the profile of those people who have behaved most violently in the society. Because I'll tell you something, I'll give you an example. If you look at the US prison system, which itself, the, our, our incarceration policies are themselves violent. If you look at how many of the people who have uh, committed violent acts and are incarcerated in the United States, how many of them have in their file multiple adverse child experiences? how much ex violence they experience as children. So this is an all systems breakdown that needs an all system solution. And I feel what I bring to it is a recognition of the human dynamics that go into um, the emergence of so much of this societal, not only dysfunction, but malfunction. Two more questions and we'll wrap up with presidential candidate Marion Williamson. Recently, to something you said earlier, I read a st statistic <coughs> that 60 to 70 percent of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck and emotional wellness is on a decline. What's a word of advice for millions who are in, fi in financial and or emotional despair? What's a word of advice you have for them? Help me get elected. And you're going to know that there's someone... In the, in the Oval Office, who is deeply aware of that and working every single day to change it. To someone who's living under those circumstances, I understand how much your lack of health care plays into this. I understand how much your college loan debt figures into this. I understand how much you're concerned that you won't be able to uh, pay for housing or for your children's education or for child care. Pay, plays into this. I get it. And it won't happen immediately, but I'm on it. And also, if you elect me, this will open the space for more people to serve in Congress and in other positions of power who also get it. I know you feel, I say to that person, I know you feel that nobody's coming to rescue you. I will do everything possible to do that. And in the meantime, I share with you my faith that through the power of God, all things are possible. Before and I let you, oh, change. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. That's all, that's all. Yeah, all things are possible. I'm there with you. And before I let you go, I've got to ask this, dead or alive, who is one, a person, one of, a person that you admire and why? Martin Luther King and Mahatma Gandhi, both of whom took the principles, well, Mahatma Gandhi had articulated the principles of nonviolence. King went over to India, studied those principles, brought them back to the United States for application to the civil rights movement in the 1960s. What they did was they, as Martin Luther King said, 
we need quantitative change in our circumstances, but qualitative change is in our souls. He said that the desegregation of the American self is the political externalization of the goal of the civil rights movement, but the ultimate goal is the establishment of the beloved community. So the reason I admire them and so align my own thinking to their with their message to the world was we need inner change and outer change. And I am guided by both of their words and actions in what I'm trying to do with this campaign and with my life. So people want to know more about Marianne Williamson and your campaign. How can they find out more about you? And if they want to support you, how can they do that? Thank you so much. Marianne2024.com. Marianne2024.com. That's M-A-R-I-A-N-N-E. And uh, there is a donate button there, as well as volunteering and everything else. And spread it to your friends and get the word out. And uh, we can just keep pushing and tear down the wall of... Um, of uh, kind of a rigged system of economic injustice, social injustice, political justice. Other generations have done it before us, and now it's our turn and we can do 